today we're going to be learning some basics of balloon hat techniques. So this way, when I teach you the rest of the balloon hats, we can just refer back to this instead of me having to show you the basics every single time. So to start with, I want to show you what some of these different balloons are. This balloon here is the one that you see most often. This is called a 260. It's called a 260 because when it's fully inflated, it is approximately two inches wide and 60 inches long. It's a pretty big balloon, right? We never fully inflate it like this. If you were here and you were able to touch it, you would see that it's very tight. So we always give it a good burp, which is just letting some air out so that we release some of the pressure inside. Okay, and then I generally tie my balloons around two fingers and then I kind of use the power of my two fingers to open them up and push the nozzle through and pull it out. So we call this the nozzle end and this here is the tail or the nipple end. All right, so here's our 260. Now we have a couple of other balloon sizes that I just want to show you real quick. This one here is called a 160. As you can see, it's significantly skinnier and when it's fully inflated, it's approximately one inch long and 60 inches wide. So again, you saw I gave it a little good burp. So we use this for things when we want more definition, um, when we want to have smaller details. A lot of times we use them for the fascinators. And so that's that. And then here we have one that's even bigger. This one's called a 350 because when it's fully inflated, it is approximately three inches wide and 50 inches long. And as always, you always want to give your balloons a good burp, okay? So here you can see all three sizes together and how they kind of relate to each other. All right, now another balloon that we're going to use a lot of is a five inch round. So this one happens to have a little mustache man on it, but um, these come in all different kinds of shapes, uh, all different kinds of patterns. And um, they're really fun. They really, uh, when we do little heads or little people type things or, you know, kind of humanoid type, type characters, we use a lot of these printed faces or printed five inch balloons. And you can see sometimes you're going to size it down to be really tiny and sometimes you use it bigger. Now this is an 11 inch round. So sometimes we use this as well. And this one, if you inflate it all the way, there we go, all right. So if you inflate it all the way, this is the balloons that you would see floating, your general regular party balloons. Most of the time when we're using it for, um, for instance, the octopus head or things like that, most of the time we're probably not going to inflate it all the way. Most of the time we're probably gonna use it something more like this. But you'll see a lot of times where we're talking about 11 inch rounds. So, now we have our basic headband. I'll hold it up against my shirt so you can see it. I realize I picked a black headband on a black background, so that was great. Um, but this is our basic headband. This is a quarter inch headband. These are the ones that I like to use. And we're gonna use these for our fascinators. And so generally, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take a scrap of a 260 and just tie it on to our headband, just like so. And then we're going to use this to tie on the rest of the pieces. So, uh, we'll come back to this in just a bit. First, I want to show you the basic helmet. So your basic helmet is where you inflate the balloon all the way. See, it's too tight right now. Give it a good burp, but you notice we want to, we want to give it a burp, but keep it inflated all the way to the end. Okay, and then what we're going to do is tie it, of course, because if you don't tie it, you know, it just kind of flies everywhere and that's just a mess. And then we're gonna twist off a little bubble. Now, here's the thing that's important. We always start twisting on the side where it's tied. And when you twist a bubble, if you let it go, it's not gonna stay, no matter who you are, no matter what you do. So you wanna twist it and hold it until you lock it to another part of the balloon. So you want to measure the head of whoever you're making the hat for and figure out where it crisscrosses. And then you simply want to squeeze and twist, okay? So now it's locked. So right now what we have is we have basically a stick hat, okay? And sometimes we're gonna be using it like this where we're gonna use the basic stick hat and then build onto it this way. But most of the time what we're gonna be doing, and as you notice, you can kind of stretch the balloons. Most of the time what we'll be doing is we'll be putting another little bubble here and bringing it around to the other side to make 
and just kind of twist it in like that. And that's going to make our basic helmet. So this basic helmet is the building block of so much of what we do. We add onto things here, we tie things around here and here, sometimes we'll use this part. Um, I would say that, I don't know, there's probably half of the hats that we do are in some way built on this basic helmet. All right, so the next thing is your, your string of pearls, or your pearls or your bollies. Okay, so for this one, we just want to inflate it a little bit because we're going to displace a lot of air as we put a lot of twists in here. So first of all, we're going to twist off a bubble and we're going to attach it to our basic helmet, just like so. And now what we're going to do is we're going to, here's the important thing when you're making the pearls or the bollies. You always need to control the first bubble and the last bubble. The other bubbles, they don't matter. As long as you have control of the first and last, they'll all stay twisted. But if you let go of the first or the last, everything becomes untwisted. So all we're going to do is we're just going to kind of pinch and twist, and we're just going to make this series of little bollies or pearls. See, just like that. So you see this hat is holding, it's controlling the first bubble, and as long as I keep hold of this, then I'm controlling the last bubble. Okay, so we're just going to keep on doing it like that. Just like so, and this makes our little pearls. Now, if I were to let this go, this is all gonna unravel, but once I lock it to something else or twist it to another piece of the balloon, all of that will stay. Now, the other thing that's important is you always wanna twist the same direction, and you always wanna try to twist the same number of rotations. So my rhythm is generally I twist three, everything three times. Um, it might be four times for you, it might be five times, whatever. I don't recommend doing less than three, but you always want to twist the same number if at all possible. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to wrap these bollies around here like that, and that will take this out of the way. Okay, now I want to show you a dealy bopper. So the dealy bopper is where we take a balloon, we partially inflate it, we tie it. Okay, and now what we want is we want the air to go into this end here. So what we're going to do is we're going to twist off a piece, just like this, and you can, if you want, you can kind of pre-stretch this end piece, just kind of like take it and snap it a couple times and that'll get, get it kind of stretched out. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to kind of collapse this piece in our hands, between our two hands, so that the air jumps up to the top. So you see this a lot with um, like poodle tails, except right now it doesn't work. Well, there we go, just like that. And then I always tie off my dilly boppers because that way when you give it to somebody, they don't like, you know, squish it down and then come back to you five seconds later going, hey, it broke. So there's the dealie bopper. And as you can see, I love these. That's what I use on my hat. So this is another very, very useful technique. And let's see. Ah, a spiral. Okay, so there's a couple of ways to do a spiral. I'm gonna show you kind of the harder way you could do it around somebody else's fingers and maybe use a pump that way. Um, I have a video on showing you how to do it using a, a smaller balloon, a 160 uh, that you put inside of it. But I'm going to show you the way that I do it most of the time. And that is that we fully inflate the balloon, like so, and then let all of the air out. Now we've done this to pre-stretch it and to release some of the pressure. And then you want to wrap it around your fingers or somebody else's fingers. It might even be easier if you're using a pump. And you want to be very careful not to twist it as you're wrapping it around the fingers. Okay, and now I'm going to blow it up my mouth because it's the only way that I know to do this well. And so basically, by having it wrapped around your fingers, it kind of trains the balloon and takes on that spiral shape. So we use those curly cues or spirals quite a lot. All right. Now, let's go back to our fascinator, our headband here, and let me show you our basic fascinator base. So what we're going to do, it's basically a five-petal flower. We're inflating the balloon, oh, I guess about two-thirds or so. Okay, and we're going to tie it off. And now we're going to twist off a small bubble. And while we control that small bubble, we're going to make a little loop. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kind of open up that loop and push that little bubble through it, and that locks it. Okay, so now I'm going to make this loop four more times. And we want to try to keep it, the sizing consistent, have the same size every time. So there's three, 
It's very squeaky. And four. And let's see. Five. Okay. And then we're gonna we're gonna arrange it so it's kind of in a flower pattern with all of the loops going up and down. I mean, you see, you, you know, right now you see they're all going up and down like that. Or you could have them going horizontal like this where you would actually see the loop. Or you could kind of have them twisted a little bit off center like I often do for flowers so that it has a little bit of a, a little bit of a pattern to it. But for the fascinator base, we're just gonna go straight up and down. And I don't need this piece. Huh, I don't know what I do with my scissors. Oh well, don't do that at home. I don't need this piece here, <laughs> but I got pieces of balloon in my teeth. Okay, so we have here, this is where we're going to put our things that are going to go on top of it. And here, this is the bottom. So you see the bottom, we have this little bubble sticking out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the nozzle and I'm just going to wrap it into the flower so that it creates a pinch twist. And we'll talk more about pinch twists in other videos. It's kind of an advanced technique, but it's going to look like this, okay? So basically, you just took the nozzle and you wrapped it in. So now, we're just going to take the balloon that we tied onto the headband, and essentially, we're just going to kind of center that bubble on both sides of the balloon, stretch it around like that, so that you see the headband kind of centers itself on there. Now, the reason that we do this, the reason for this bubble, is because that's what keeps the head, it keeps the, um, the headband from going up inside the flower. So it sits better on people's heads. So it's a little bit wobbly if you're just holding it. Let's see, and then we'll wrap around, right? So it's a little bit wobbly if you're just holding it, but once you have the counter pressure of somebody's head on it, then it's not nearly as wobbly. It's just a little bit of wobbly. And a little bit of wobbly is good because a little bit of motion makes it kind of fun. So there are our basic techniques for making balloon hats.